Welcome to the most shocking interview yet. Today, we are thrilled to be joined by Tim Walsh. Tim had the privilege to be a contestant on the reality show, Last Chance for Love. At least that's what he thought. Two people looking for love in all the wrong places, but nothing could be more wrong than this. Meet Tim Walsh and Ingrid Weiss, two people in search of romance on a reality show they don't know is fake. Their entire world created by an army of writers, producers, and actors, recorded 24 hours a day and put on national television. This is Joe Schmo 2, starring 11 actors. Tim Herzog as Austin, The Bachelor. Valerie Aslan as Piper, The Bachelorette. Jonathan Torrance as Geralt, The Gotta Be Gay Guy. Natasha Legero as Rita, The Drunk. Kevin Kirkpatrick as Bryce, The Stalker. Jessica Makinson as Eleanor, The Weeper. Steve Mallory as Ernie, the heir. Gretchen Palmer as Ambrosia, the bitch. John Huertas as TJ, the playa. Janice Speaker as Cammy, the moron. And me, Ralph Garman, as Derek Newcastle, the pompous host. All performing for the two people who think it's real, Joe and Jane Schmo. This is Joe Schmo 2. It turns out that Tim was part of a social experiment called the Joe Schmo Show, where alongside two different Jane Schmoes, Tim was surrounded by actors putting on a fake reality TV experience all about him and Jane Schmo. Tim, thank you very much for joining us. You you get cast for the show, so they gave you a call. Talk us through that. Um, it's funny. I was walking into, I was bartending at the time. Uh, walked in and one of my buddies, I was actually grabbing something that I'd left there the night before. And a buddy goes, Hey, you got to try out for the show. And they, the way they played it was uh, 10 grand in Vegas, some bullshit like that. Um, so I just did the, you know, the interview um, kind of thing. And they said, Oh, do you know any bar tricks? And back in the day, I was a pretty big booze hound. So um, I did a shot of Jameson in my nose. And I think that sort of you know, caught their eye. Um, a couple weeks later, I get the phone call and I just started dating my now wife. Um, and uh, I told her about it. And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, oh, I just got this call back from this. And she goes, what? What?" And so I, I, I you know, they did the casting call out in, out in California. I said, I'm going. And she's like, all right, oddly. And when I, when I, came back she's like how'd it go and I was like I think they're gonna pick me and she's like for what and I said I think it's gonna be a dating show and she was like you're a fucking loser get out of here like we're done we are done and I said sweetheart no no don't worry about it there's gonna be money involved you know and I was trying to save some money for my first open up my first bar and she dumped me like a you know like a bad sack of sack of potatoes <laughs> So I so, went, obviously, then I went on the show. Did you have to do anything like, um, I remember in season one that Matt had to draw a naked lady and not be pervy to be able to make sure that he's a good uh, guy. Did you, they put you through the ringer in any so, like Yeah, that? so there was this one thing and and I've asked the question afterwards because the, at the Casco, there was a bunch of other guys that were, were there and they did one thing where um, it was like called like speed dating and they brought in three girls. One was like a normal, whatever, like assistant, obviously on the, on the show or whatever. And then the last one was a, like a porn star stripper. She walks in, takes her shirt off. And then you're having this speed date as she's like getting naked, um, which was totally funny. And obviously um, I played it as cool as I possibly could. And then they said, all right, no one, you can't say a word about how your dates went. So we, they put all the guys back in this room and then some of the guys were like, did you see the tits on that girl and whatever? <laughs> so as like everyone starts sort of yapping and I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. You guys got tits in your face? Oh my God, I had the worst date ever, you know, kind of thing. So I did ask, I was like, was that like, was that a setup? They were like, no, like we were setting the guys up to see who would talk and who wouldn't. Mm. And then I... I, I know how to keep a secret. So you arrive at the house. Um, there's obviously a bunch of prep. You get driven up in a limo. You're standing in front of this house. And um, it's actually funny. The very first word out of your mouth is jackpot. And the yep. last word out of your mouth when the show officially ends is also jackpot. So I yeah. think that... Not planned. 
by no any plan. stretch. No. But um, so I'm a big Adam Sandler fan. And anyway, you know, Billy Madison, he's sitting in class and he's in third grade. You know, Veronica Vaughn walks in and he goes, Jackpot. And it was just something that anytime me and my friends saw, you know, a pretty girl or whatever, it was Jackpot. Jackpot. Right to that. Jackpot. You. <laughs> Jackpot. <laughs> you know, so, and then it just, it just stuck, you know, maybe it was a little bit of a nervous titch or, uh, you know, throughout the show, but it was, it was good. You know, obviously Ingrid is uh, coming in at this point. She's a James Schmo as well. And you guys are kind of touching base. Now, everybody else that comes in after is an actor and Ingrid being Ingrid. Um, and right. again, I say that, I, I swear yeah. that it's a it's such a positive thing. It's like, of course. Uh, if, if for those who have watched season one, it's like saying, oh, that guy's definitely being a mat. Okay, you get that. You know, he's sure. bright knighting and doing sure. what he should. Sure. And Ingrid being Ingrid and pulling Ingrid is now watching everybody and seeing that they're all calm, cool, and collected. What are you right. thinking about during that time? I was just totally green to the whole situation. I knew I wanted to do this. I knew there was going to be some money involved. I knew, remember being like younger, or not younger, but previous reality shows that I saw, and it wasn't much. I just saw like people was like, look at all this fucking drama, right? <laughs> These guys are just, they're creating this stupid shit just to be like, cool but at the end of the day they look like assholes so i was trying to make a point of not being like a, a drama queen on this on the show not knowing that it, <laughs> it was uh, all about it you joke, anyway. it was a joke on me anyway yeah. so um but i remember just sitting there and ingrid just kept asking questions to everyone that came up and they kept saying like hey could you not talk and she just kept talking and talking and talking and i didn't see or hear when she asked one of the girls that got kicked off, oh, when did you hear, hear about the show? She goes, oh, my agent called me today. Right. How did they find you? I didn't hear that. And obviously she did. And she clung on to that, like, all right, something's up. And her name is Ferrari. Do you know who, know, who told me that? Ingrid. Yeah. <laughs> Because they could do, she knew yeah. she found out her name yeah. was Ferrari, yeah, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, so you you walk up and then you've got Piper coming up or Valerie, I should say, coming up. Yeah. And and for you, so you've you've met the, and we're going on the premise that we we know Tim, you love your wife, you have wonderful children, you've got a wonderful <laughs> relationship. We're talking about past Tim. Yes. So, yes. So the thing is, so part of this like questionnaire, they ask you, what's your perfect girl? And I was like, and I'm five, seven, right? I'm not, you know, I'm below average height. So I said, you know, I like, I'm an olive skin, brown hair guy, a little bit shorter than me, fit, yada, yada. That's my perfect. And that's my wife. That's literally my wife. And then out walks, you know, five, 10, blonde hair, blue eyes, pale skin, Piper, Valerie. So they obviously, looking back at it, cast someone that I wasn't going to fall for. But she was a smoke show, right? Yeah. She, was, she was definitely hot. She was anyone's type. Right. Um, so first, first thought was, I guess, she was an attractive girl. But other than that. Well, and that was the tricky situation is to is to give you a believable premise, but not allow you to fall in love with somebody. Correct. And Correct. secretly, you were you were in it for the money only because you loved your wife. You knew, you knew from the time before. No, I knew when I met Aaron, the night I met her, I knew I was going to marry her. So that was January 9th of 2004, the night I met her. And then this casting was like three weeks later. Or not casting, but the that uh, quick oh, interview or whatever. Yeah. The, yeah, and then so it was March. Say so, two months after I met her, I was already I was out there filming. Yeah. So yes, one hundred percent knew I wanted to be with Aaron. Two, yes, the money was the opportune. That was it. I yeah, knew there was going to be something. Then obviously they said, "Oh yeah, if the girl picks you, you get a hundred thousand bucks." Oh, and then you can always use a hundred thousand bucks. And, and you did end up starting a bar. If, if 
my reading I, into Wikipedia correct. that goes in. Yeah. Yep. And I'm still still in the business. Now you've gone through, you've you've met some of the people. Um, talk about, I guess, the relationship with Bryce. Uh, so Evan. that and, and don't worry, I, I'm sitting there watching this as I guess in 2004, I would have been 21 years old. So yeah. I'm watching this at 21 years old. I'm I'm on board with you. Like everything right. that you're you're saying, I'm on board with it. Like this guy is crazy, knowing that it's fake. But I'm like, if I were in that situation, I'd be doing right. the same thing. Right. Sure. Um, so Kevin uh, or Bryce um, is they did he just did a great job, right? This an unbelievable playing this you know quiet psycho nice guy like played the you know when we were sitting and talking or whatever he, he was you know you know i think i did say something like how did he pass that like mental <laughs> test that they gave us um but um outside of it i've seen him on more commercials to date than pro anyone except for i guess john i mean he did castle and he does all of us or all of you, whatever that, that new show is that he's on. But um, Kevin, I've seen, he's done more commercials, uh, but he was great, but he played a great fucking weirdo. Tim. Fucking freak, I told it's you, Tim, man. I know, but don't. Don't, he's trying to, trying to fucking bird. Yeah, but he's unstable. It's not don't, an ordinary bird, it's a beautiful. Don't, don't push it further. <laughs> I, fuck that, that is he, just, that is a bird. Wild. He's nuts, don't. Push it. <laughs> so and, that, and I and obviously I believed it. Yeah. So I that moment killed the fucking bird. That that's a moment at the end when when the reveal happens where you've got uh Bryce comes in, he's in his hoodie, he's rushing in, and you step in, it's like, can I punch this guy? If there's any reason why this holy union should not take place, speak now or forever hold your peace. Wait! Holy shit! Oh Jesus! I, I, can I can no, I please punch him? No, 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 don't. You, you're marrying Austin? Oh each my other. God! You can't do that. You guys don't even love each other. Oh Jesus! Yeah. That was a, a legitimate moment for you. That was a legitimate moment, but there was there was a moment, and I re, I didn't really recall this until I, I read it a couple of days ago. Um, when I got kicked off or voted off the show. They bring me back to reveal that Bryce killed the fucking bird. <laughs> and I come out and they bring me around the house. And I, I saw Gerald, RG Gerald, who is just a phenomenal, funny guy. Um, but he saw me and didn't, and then like quickly turned away because he wasn't supposed to see me. And he didn't say anything. He wasn't like, hey, what are you doing here? And I was like, that, I thought that was really odd. Um, and that was the night that I find out that he killed the bird. So apparently, um, <laughs> no, no, no falcons were harmed in the making of the show, <laughs> right? um, which is hysterical. The falcon twist. Talk about it. You the know, I, I, I interviewed Ralph Garman. Did not ask about falcon twist because I know that's what he always gets asked when he's talking about Joe Schmo. Yeah. I have not talked falcon twist with anybody. You are my first person for falcon twist. Okay. Talk to me about these Falcon twists. All right. So it was a little bit more played on as it, it was cut. Like the bird really came down and landed on him almost 95% of the time. <laughs> All the other stuff is during rehearsals. So they'd be like, here it comes. And everyone's like, oh, you have to duck. Or So that was all, all like played out. Um, so the bird was fine in the three weeks that we had it was we probably had four or five falcon twists or however many it was it was fine but during rehearsals for them is when the bird ran into the fucking window <laughs> and you know would wouldn't get off his wouldn't get off ralph's arm you know, the bird flying in is really the surprise i mean this bird is huge and what the trainer had never mentioned to me is that this bird is insane there's a perch <laughs> that he's certifiably nuts and apparently suicidally depressed because during rehearsals, he would come soaring down from the top of this mountain and just 
bam, with the thud that you thought the thing had to have broken its neck. It was like a Bugs Bunny cartoon. It slid down the window, hit the ground, flapped around, apparently knocked senseless. Ooh. Now I'm thinking, the bird's trying to kill itself, or it's so fucking stupid that it doesn't know that I've got a big piece of beef in my hand and it's supposed to land on my hand. Ooh. So these windows are actually doors, glass doors. We're gonna open them up, and we're gonna put Derek in the center of the doorway, and that will solve all the problems. This time it flies just past me, now it's in the house. Now it's flying around in the house, we can't get it. Funny thing is, in the storyline, Derek and Montecor, the falcon, aren't supposed to be getting along also all that well. Derek's not too keen on this bird, and that has been very easy to play because this thing's been nothing but a pain in the ass ever since we started working with it. It no, fell. Oh, Thank you, Montecor. Oh, dear God. <laughs> go. Go, let go. God, I hate this bird. Uh, the twists themselves um, is when you found out that you had a $100,000 winner. Um, you know, all of that stuff was good. Um, it, it definitely played along well. You, you enjoyed the Falcon twist because you didn't know you were hoping it would be like, and for a half a million dollars. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know? So um, it was, they, they were good. Talk about the, the finale. So you're, you're going through and, you know, you, there's a, a possibility at this point that, uh, that Piper might pick you. Sure. And talk about the, the situation as you're going through and she's just going back and forth with the, but, but, yeah. but. Um, Thank you for like reminding me about that one. Um, so a little, I guess I can go back just a few things. Like when I got out there and I I'd said it a couple of times, like I was on spring break. That was like the first time I got time off to sit by a pool and drink literally all day long. So first day they slide a menu underneath your door. And it was like, what do you want? And it was like, oh, I'll have bacon, eggs. And I was like, I'll take a mimosa. And they brought me a mimosa. And then I'd have like three or four mimosas and then we'd go out and then it would be lunch and I'd have one or two Miller lights and then three or four Miller lights. Sometimes, sometimes like those nights, like the, the, when I had to do the strip tease and the gorilla outfit, mm -hmm. I was I'm damn near blacked out. <laughs> like I was drinking. So then maybe a couple of days into it, they said, uh, no more mimosas at breakfast. Like, limit your beers at lunch because you're getting a little too fucked up at the end of the night. So on the day of the finale was, we, we I was drinking all day, 100% all day. Like, is this going to be my 100,000 or not? Like, I knew it was the last day of taping, blah, blah, blah. Um, so that being said, the going the bat, the butt, the butt, the butt, the butt, I wanted, I remember being like, but can I just get a Miller Lite right now? Because this is taking way too long. Austin, this experience has brought up feelings in me that I thought were long dead. But Tim, you've made me tingle. <laughs> and I thank you for that. And there's something exciting about the freshness of a new relationship. And our future is wide open. But Austin and I have a long history. And I'm proud of that history. And it's a history that I don't want to forget. But Tim, your honesty and openness have been a beacon of light. You are my lighthouse. <laughs> you've shown me the way and you've helped me clear my vision and see that I belong with Austin. Oh my. See, and I hope I, you have Miller Lite in your bar. That, that so, oh, I do, no, it's, I literally drink Miller Lite. Um, I drink Miller Lite milk and water. That's about, that's, that's the extent of what I drink. 
Um, it does a body good. Hey, look, this is the this is the perfect advertisement. Miller Light. You want to look the exact same hey. as you did twenty years <laughs> ago? Yeah, drink a thousand Miller Lights a year. You're good. <laughs> um, Had she selected you? Now, obviously, we know that that was never going to happen. So, what yeah. happens if she selects you? What goes through your mind if she decides that she's going to select you? Where when do I get the check? <laughs> there you go. Um, and they gave us a couple of days of decompression um, in at, at a Marriott where yeah, just drank all day and like really thought about what had just happened to me. Honestly, if had she picked it, it would have been like, so do I still get the money? How do how does this work? And then hey, listen, I literally the love of my life is. 3,000 miles that way. Thanks, but no thanks. How did you feel afterwards? I, I, I remember season one, Matt kind of felt betrayed a little bit, but they had a big, a bit of a different situation because they were together like 24 seven. Yeah. You guys were separate a lot. Oh, the whole, the whole time. Cause they were rehearsing and doing like later you hear about it, you figure it out. I mean, I spent a lot of downtime um, drinking in my room. Yeah, I felt fine. The, the night of, it, it was great. We, it was a good, big party afterwards. And there were some times like Valerie like was really, really crying. And I was like, oh, really? Are you really crying? Or are you just an actor? Because you know? I'm struggling as a person. <laughs> no, that's okay. No. I'm still going to call you beautiful. You're still, <laughs> no, I, I get mad. I told you for like 10 minutes. It's a weird position because you no. you sign on for a job that of course, no, you're an actor. You get this job and, and you no, that's you start living in this world with you guys, and um, I just I feel really really Come bad here. if I hurt oh, you no. in any way, shape, or form. No, no. I'm really Come really here. sorry. Come here. You take a job and you're doing this character, and you, you just you don't think that you're gonna wind up hurting somebody, but you do. I really hope that Tim can forgive me, and I, uh, I think he is an amazing guy. You know, and that, like, I guess I came off as a dick, but, or pissed off. I really wasn't until probably two days when I sobered up a little bit, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm, I'm the brunt of a joke. If they don't paint me the way that they could, they could paint me as a total dipshit. Like, it could be, this could be bad. Then a couple of Miller Lights later, dip in the pool. <laughs> That was fun. Did you watch the show with your wife at all? Uh, we did. So I ended up getting home at like maybe midnight, one in the morning. And I called her and said, I'm home. And she was a, teaching at the time. So I said, can I come over? So I came over and I said, nothing happened. Everything was good. Um, all I can say is that I, you know, I, what, I got what I went out to do. She was like, okay. Cool. She was like, so nothing, no, I said, nothing, nothing happened. No, no kissing, no nothing. There was a couple of dates. It's really, it's going to be funny, more funny than anything else. Yeah. And she was fine. And then when the preview started coming out, so I was back in April, preview started coming out maybe in June, July or whatever. And then she you know, then she knew what show I was on. And then she was like, I watched the first season. Like, it's all no. good. Yeah. So well, she was like, oh, okay, then we're good. Hopefully she at that point didn't say, did you have to lift, lick chocolate off of the stripper? <laughs> I remember watching that. Did you have your hands on a high-priced hooker? <laughs> yeah. uh, so speaking so, of the game, speaking of the games, what was the, what was the most memorable one for you? Um, the bangers and mash was, was pretty funny. We're now about to play my favorite of all the games, bangers and mash. Now I know what you must be thinking. Why do I have an empty hot dog bun in front of me and why are they pouring mashed potatoes on Tiffany? Well, the potatoes are for hiding these bangers. Go! Uh, oh. <laughs> I think Cammie was very worried about her hair. But I have to say, we were all just going to be shoving our faces into mashed potato. There was no way to look pretty. <laughs> Cammy is out. <laughs> TJ's out. <laughs> Bryce is out. 
Oh, there's one. Ingrid is out. Ingrid is out. Eleanor is out. Amanda is out. Tim is out. Thanks for telling me now, pal. Um, the yoga thing could be memorable, but that I, I was like more hurt from trying to keep a pose. I can't even remember. <laughs> it was something. Um, but I remember falling in the pool because what's your name was just bouncing in front of me. Very excited. I'm going to Costa Rica. The Cami came, and we all know who Cami is by now. <laughs> I was trying to stay focused on one of the squares of the pool and just concentrate on one focus, just one thing. Then I got two things in my face. Oh, I, can't. Oh. Ah. I can do it. I can do it. Baskin Robbins right there, and I, you know, I just lost it. Ah. Ah. Yeah. That's when I ended up in the pool. Taste My Treat was funny because John literally, that was one of the funniest things I've seen because he, he kept it down by his, his, his business and he gave it to her. That, that was funny. He was, he was, I still, I don't say in as much touch as we did, you know, 10 years ago, but, you know, stayed in touch with him and with uh, Steve. Well, it's funny because they're here right now. Welcome in. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Yeah, I was really hoping I had reached out to Kevin. Uh, he hasn't responded yet because I'm basically cold calling everybody. Yeah. Um, with the exception, I Ralph, uh, I cold called Brian and Brian hooked me up with John, John Hallmore, yeah. who's one of the writers. Um, but uh, I really wanted to see if I could get Kevin and just have him break into this conversation. At, That'd be right amazing. At the end and just That'd have be him. amazing. Yeah, it would have been really funny. He's like, that guy's an actor. <laughs> because he was, yeah. <laughs> because he was buddies with, I think Steve Mallory was the one that got him on, but they play poker like once a week after the show. Like they're still buddies. For you, when somebody says Joe Schmo, like do you still get recognized as Joe Schmo sometimes? Uh, it's, it's been, it's been a while, but it's funny when like being in a conversation and someone's like, I don't know if some fucking Joe Schmo just walked in the door right now and I go, Hey, watch it, watch it. <laughs> and then they'll laugh at the laugh, at the fact that I brought that up. Um, but it's been, it's been a while. Since been that, recognized? Oh, yeah. absolutely. It's funny. In the beginning, it was kind of, it was kind of funny. Yeah. Um, never got, never, you know, wasn't crazy by any stretch. So what do you think about when somebody says Joe Schmo though, and your, your brain goes and it just remembers yeah. that kind of one big thing. What was that one thing that you remember? Honestly, I wish like, I, I, I wish I figured it out earlier and had the balls to just be funnier than I, I, I could have, I could have been funnier. I could have pushed it to a limit where it would have been a better show. Honestly, that's, I just, I felt a little reserved. It, it's that money, right? They, they dangle it enough over your head. And had I figured it out or had someone slipped and said something like, that's the shit that I think about being like, fuck man, that would have been a great opportunity to be really, really fucking funny. Who cracked you up the most? Like just off Gerald, camera, on camera? Gerald um, was definitely the funniest very funny. I've seen him a couple of times on random, like totally eighties or nineties shows, things like that. Um, TJ, John was like my buddy, Steve Mallory was great. I mean, but he was only on the show for, if I was out there filming three weeks, he was there for seven of those days. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I lived with him for like that first week. He was a good dude. Uh, but John probably John Huertes was, um, the funniest, all around good guy, stayed in touch with afterwards kind of thing. Let's say you're in an alternate reality and I will point out again, I also decided that I was going to marry my wife on the very first time that I yeah. met her. So I'm in the same boat as you. Again, I saw a lot of similarities between your character and my character uh, of how I dealt with the world. So I always uh, sure. identified with you there. So I've, I've, it's funny that you mentioned that and I do the exact same thing. Assuming like your wife is not there, 
and it was a dating show where you could date anybody. Was there anybody there that you're kind of like, okay, this is a person I think I might like to know. Um, not not date, necessarily like a sexual date? way, but just like. Well, no, I, if it's that. Go. First, I'm gonna start at the bottom of your ball sack. She kind of starts off like a startled fawn and she's not really sure what to say. And then I'm gonna lick him and shove him in my mouth. She was not forgetting the stepchildren. She uh, was all about everything down there. And I was thinking, okay, just start at the bottom of the balls, and then I'm gonna go up your long, hard shaft, and I'm gonna suck your cock so fucking dry, this you don't even fucking know. awesome. It, it got as raunchy as I've ever been talked dirty to in my life, and it was awesome. Uh, she did eventually pick up steam. And if that doesn't really work, I'll shove my thumb up your ass. Thumb in the butt, which threw me for a little loop. Go. Other, other than that, keep going. And she rode me like a bull. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, knock us over. Uh, we got very, very close and, and very familiar with each other this afternoon. <laughs> she, she did very well. I, you know, I thought that was uh, one hell of a job. Uh, uh, yeah. It's certainly some of the finest improvisation I have seen in my career. And I bless her heart. I really support what she's doing. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Right, that's it. I'm done. So am I. Pork to beans, 100%. She was smoke. And we're friends on Facebook, and she's got two kids now, and like a couple photos every so often of each other's, like, growing families, whatever. Um... But Amanda was really cool. What a fun, like we stayed in touch afterwards. Um, still, she's married with a couple kids. She was really cool. Um, but dating wise, eh, um, no. You know who I, who was really funny was the, uh, the girl that was really nervous. Um, oh, no. Jessica. Jessica Elmer. Makinson. Yeah, she was, she was really funny. And I remember even saying on the show, like, she, I, th I think I said an actress couldn't have done that any better than what she did. She was cool. I really, I, 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 she was great. Sincere, obviously, I've never talked to her ever since, but I liked her. Did you do the show again? In a heartbeat. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I could always use a hundred grand. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I would do it. And that's the thing. Like if I were... Um, if I were single, I definitely didn't want to be the guy who thought he was famous because he was on reality TV. So, you know, Spike was like, this guy's your agent, you know, we'll get you doing this. And I don't know if you saw this thing. It was a total fucking disaster. It was Spike after dark or Spike after midnight. It was a, it was a late night talk show. And we went up and filmed. And this was just one of my stupid days. I mean, we got up <clears throat> and it was like a monsoon or something. So we couldn't fly. We had to take a train. So I had a couple of drinks on the train. We get in, blah, 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 drinking all day. Anyway, we don't film until God knows what hour. I'm literally blacked out at this point. And I made a total, complete ass out of myself. And only one of my friends actually saw the episode and was like, oh my God. <laughs> anyway, it was probably the only fucking episode that they did. Um, anyway. So I just didn't want to be that guy who thought I was cool for even just being on the show. So I, I purposely didn't like pursue. I've always had a passion for things like this, but I, I think I maybe missed my opportunity. So if I was single, then maybe I put a, I would have maybe pursued it a little bit more, try to use it as a springboard. Um, I've done a little bit of stand up, and have, it hasn't gone great, but it hasn't gone horrible. Um, <laughs> You know, it just, I, I enjoy making people laugh. So maybe I would have maybe stayed out there and tried to do something um, had I not wanted to come home and did, have the life that I have right now. Did you re ever repeat the gorilla strip tease for your wife? No. What the heck, man? No, no. She, uh, yeah, going back, we, we did watch a couple of the episodes together, but it was kind of cringing. <laughs> she was like, oh, God. She's like, I can't, I can't do this shit in public. I can't watch this shit in public with you. This is just, 
because you guys were having the viewing viewing parties right we had some viewing parties at the, at the bar i worked at yeah. um so it was yeah it, it it was fun it was fun but yeah not as much not as much for her that wasn't a good time in her life I can imagine that'd be that'd be stressful for her. Yeah, it would be it would be a major conversation if if we got a call from Spike being like, "Hey, we're doing something," and I'd be like, "Cool, let's do it." My wife's like, "What are you talking about, uh, fucking jackass?" 